We believe that using the four C's to engage students is imperative. As educators prepare students for this new global society, teaching the core content subjects must be enhanced by incorporating critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. Double click on that black bear and it tells us everything. Is that going to help us or hurt us when we create our food web? Help us. Without a doubt, it's going to help us. Boys and girls, break up into partners or by yourselves. Get going on creating those food webs. We couldn't find uh, the missing links. Um, as we saw in Mr. Donatello's class, the students were collaborating around the use of Chromebooks, which we have one-to-one um, -one throughout our upper grades. The use of these Chromebooks facilitate communication and enable the students to collaborate with each other and the teachers on the spot. And it really helps them learn the way we all live now because today you're going to be changing font size, you're going to be changing the color, you're going to be adding pictures. And remember, some of those pictures can be really, really big. You need to make them smaller so they all fit. Mrs. Lascalzo's first grade class and Mrs. Gemke's second grade class are working collaboratively in Computer Buddies to complete an All About Me project. They are doing the project using Google Docs. Students' creativity is fostered as they choose their own images to enhance their presentations. At the conclusion of the project, partnerships will share their presentations with the class, again reinforcing communication skills. Okay. You're doing, you're doing it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, today, boys and girls, we are going to learn how to build sight words on the computer, and we're also going to work with partners to talk about the word. So what we're going to do is we're going to get together with our cookie and milk partner. Use your finger, very gentle, and when you see that cross, click the mouse and drag the letter over into the box. Boys and girls, what is the next letter that I need? E. E. Sage, can you come up and point to the E for me? Excellent. So I'm going to take my finger and drag. We see the four C's in technology in all grade levels, starting with our youngest students in kindergarten. Um, you saw the kindergartners using uh, technology to help reinforce their red words. You heard the children speaking and listening to each other and also being able to uh, select, click, drop, and move certain letters, which you could tell they enjoyed. So if we look here at the Walt, we can see that we are entering the nonfiction unit and we're searching for the main idea. We're looking for contrasts and contradictions in our writing and our reading. So it's a combination of both today. Wilbur is forced to work in the tropical climate of Ecuador to help support the numerous members of his family. Why are those words highlighted in pink? Caitlin. Because those are worthy wise words. Those are worthy wise words. All of the words, you have everything open there. We are up to lesson eight or nine right now, but you can use any of the words past there as well. You just saw in Ms. Seigel's fifth grade classroom, the children were doing an interactive cool. writing assignment based off of a contrast and contradiction, but notice a note moment that they had just learned in their language arts class. You can go up the mountains and go to this waterfall if you need more water. Awesome, so you not only have the fresh water source that's here, but you have a moving water source. Why are moving water sources sometimes better? Why else could it be useful, Dylan? There's like, the, when you like get water when it's moving, it's not as dirty. Good, all right, it's cleaning it, it's taking all the bacteria and kind of pushing it through. It's not sitting there and just holding it. Mosquitoes tend to like stagnant water, not so much river water. Good job, thank you for that, all right? As we saw in Mr. Hackbar's class, students were engaging in the four C's through really critically thinking about the portrait that was in Ooh, front of them, okay. the painting. Like he really had the students zooming in on their own personal devices and having the opportunity to really look and engage and then come forward and even in a whole group fashion collaborate with one another and help each other out as they progress through the analysis. In Miss Mormino's class, we saw students working independently and yet collaboratively at the same time on their devices. They're engaging in some writing workshop strategies and it's a really free kind of setting for the students. So they have a lot of choice, which is also important, but when it relates directly to the four C's, you have them communicating with one another, they're collaborating with one another, they're critically thinking both independently and with one another and they're creating this product so you really see it in all four facets even though it's a really comfortable and relaxed and choice driven environment 
make a new backdrop that you want it to switch to when you're done. It's going to say end game. Because we need to end our game. If we touch that color, then our game is over. Uh, the paint thing. Put it here. I found the paint brush. I'm going to put more texture on that here. In Ms. Trinati's coding class, students were able to learn how to integrate certain aspects of the code as they move forward and are creating their games. Um, in the down moments of the class, what's wonderful to see is the kids are really quick to engage with one another. They're drawing from one another, they're answering each other's questions, and it's a really organic, collaborative environment um, where they have to think critically in order to create their games. It'll be fabulous to see their final product as they work through all of these steps. So then you just need that one. I'll help you with that though once we get there, okay? Okay. Okay. So the project that you're going to be working on is the fork in the road. Um, it is a project in which the character comes to a crossroads. You tell a story up to a certain point and then the character makes a choice to go one way. Be a medium close-up. Okay. I want to like show maybe like mm -hmm. the list just kind of yeah, like the ingredients. Going. Should we get a shot of like like the list dropping on the ground? No, that'd be really good. That would be really good. So when I count to three, I want you to run at Emma, but don't go too fast because I want to be able to get your face, okay? All right. Yeah. All right, so Sam, really like run. Not that fast though, but just run, okay? You're mad. You're attacking Emma, okay? You ready? Action. I know you have the formula, Emma. Okay, guys, I kind of like that scene. What do you think? Should we use yeah. that? Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Brennan's film class worked on a project called Fork in the Road, in which students come to a crossroad and make a decision to proceed one way following the story to completion, then go back to the crossroad and follow an alternate storyline, communicating their ideas, collaborating on script, and filming and editing a final version. So this is part of my hypothesis, but it's also number five. Right, so these can be two separate hypotheses. Yeah. Yeah, two different ideas that we have. One is about the direction, one is about our feelings, or our physical feeling at least, yes? Good, great. You all, do you all have the same answer for yeah. the describe part? Describe when you're heavier, describe when you're lighter, or describe when you feel normal in the elevator. Do you all have the same answer? Probably. Yeah. I hope so. You do not. I don't Mr. Chen's honors physics students were following up on an investigation on how they feel heavier or lighter in an elevator and connecting these feelings with the change in motion in the elevator. The students shared their answers on a large whiteboard to show their thinking and evaluate and critique the consistency of their answers. Do you feel it? Yeah. You feel heavy, right? So this sense of heaviness this comes from the floor. Students in Mr. Welfield's French class, using their linguistic creativity and critical thinking skills to communicate with students from our sister school in Montpellier, France, via Google Hangout. I'm going to click that to make sure that the EQ is engaged. And then I'm going to have Danielle uh, play a little bit so that we can see what she kind of sounds like. All right, so Danielle, whenever you're ready, give it a shot. <laughs> Uh, because generally the range of her instrument is kind of in the 200 hertz, 100 hertz to about 1000 hertz. And rolling. And you'll notice that as you start moving these nodes, the quality of the sound does begin to change. Even transforming the sound of the instrument. Mr. Pena's music technology class working on EQ, taking the sound from a trombone and creating different pitches. Students collaborated on creating their own musical EQ projects. Focusing on the four C's is something that the Westwood Regional School District values as an important piece to our students' education. Critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity can be seen in various ways within our classrooms.